This is the Yaku Cosmopolitan, and in this video, we will be ranking the top 50 players in Japan's Nippon Professional Baseball League going into the 2023 season. I did this list last year, and while I don't necessarily think I did a bad job on it, there are definitely some changes I want to make this year. So I'll explain my process for coming up with the list this year. If you're not interested in any of this, just skip to the timestamp on the screen to get right into the top 50. Okay, so first off, this is a 2023 video, so I'm projecting how well players will perform this upcoming season. Obviously, a player's track record gives us the best indication of this, but I want to put both the established veterans with sustainable production and the up-and-coming youngsters on an upward trajectory on a roughly equal plane. And I'll be looking at a three-year sample size of stats, but I'm also going beyond just the surface level numbers. So that means I'm going to consider some of the underlying numbers to hopefully get a better indication of how players stack up against their peers. Second, I'm weighing defense and base running way more this year with the help of Delta Graphs. I didn't have access to the advanced defensive and running metrics last year, so I basically just punted on it altogether and ranked position players predominantly on their hitting. And don't get me wrong, I'm still going to value offense more than anything else since it's the most quantifiable and impactful part of a player's game, but there's definitely some more room to show the defensive wizards and speedsters some love through stats like ultimate zone rating and ultimate base running. And third, this is the big one, I'm not going to rank any relief pitchers in the top 50. I already have more than enough players to worry about and the problem is, if I decide to rank relievers, then I can't just include one or two, I would have to include all of the elite relievers. And relief pitchers are invaluable on a game-to-game -game basis, but their workload just doesn't give them the impact of a starting pitcher over the course of a full season, and they can be very volatile. But don't worry for all you reliever enjoyers out there, I'll make a separate video covering my top 10 relief pitchers in the future. And one last thing, just sort of generally speaking, MPB is a very pitching friendly environment right now. The balls were deadened in 2022, and although we won't know if the balls are any different in 2023 until the season starts, it's still not going to be anywhere near as offensively explosive or as three true outcomes heavy as MLB. So keep that in mind when you look at some of these numbers. Okay, so on the bottom of the screen, you'll see a player's age as of the recording of this video, as well as some key stats from the 2022 regular season. Remember that 100 is the league average for all the weighted stats. The higher the better for stats with a plus sign, and the lower the better for the stats with a minus sign. Of course, these aren't the only metrics I'm using to develop these rankings, but it should give you guys a pretty good idea of what kind of numbers they put up last season. I did months of research and preparation for this video, and I asked a lot of people in the English-speaking MPB community for help on this project, so I'll credit everyone at the end of the video. But without further ado, here's Yaku Cosmopolitan's Top 50 MPB Players in 2023. Kicking us off at number 50, outfielder Yutaro Sugimoto. Sugimoto took the Pacific League by storm in 2021, winning the home run crown with 32 bombs and a 301 batting average. If it weren't for his teammate Yoshinobu Yamamoto, he might have even won the Pacific League MVP award. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to deliver Buffalo's fans the encore they were looking for, as he floundered through the first half of 2022. However, he found his groove around the All-Star break, and while his overall numbers may not show it, he provided much-needed offense for the Buffaloes when they needed it most. He was even named 2022 Japan Series MVP, thanks to some timely hitting. Even in a down year, he still ranked 6th in hard-hit percentage among MPB hitters with at least 400 plate appearances. Entering his age 32 season in 2023, Sugimoto will have to prove that his excellent 2021 campaign was no fluke. At number 49, left-handed pitcher Takayuki Kato of the Nippon Ham Fighters. Kato was one of the top stories of the 2022 season, as he posted a fantastic 2.01 ERA, despite averaging just 86 miles per hour on his fastball. It's just very rare to find a player with his sort of profile succeed in the modern game. He managed a minuscule walk rate of 2.0%, the third best mark in MPV history among qualified pitchers easily placing him among the top 10 pitchers in the league last year. 
Now, 2022 could be considered his breakout season, but the Southpaw has been a staple of the fighter's rotation for the past few years now. So, going into his age 31 season, we can expect him to be somewhere in between the elite pitcher he was in 2022 and the solidly above average pitcher he's been throughout the rest of his career. Coming in at number 48, outfielder Tyler Austin. This one really pains me. If Austin could just stay healthy, he would easily be a top 10, maybe even top 5 talent in Japan. In his first two seasons in Yokohama, Austin put his colossal power on full display, slugging over 600 with 48 home runs. But Austin has only played in 210 games over the past three years. That's barely half of his team's total regular season games during that span. To make matters worse, Austin was reduced to just 38 plate appearances as a full-time pinch hitter in 2022, and the results weren't great. So, in order for Austin to live up to his three-year contract extension signed after the 2021 season, he needs to stay on the field more. But considering that he just had to undergo Tommy John surgery in October, it's still a long road to recovery for the 31-year-old American. Next up at number 47, outfielder Shogo Akiyama. Akiyama is no longer the elite five-tool player he once was with the Cebu Lions before a failed MLB stint in Cincinnati destroyed his confidence. But a mid-season return to MPB with the Hiroshima Carp paid dividends for the club. In just 44 games, he managed to slot right in as one of the Carp's top four hitters. Akiyama hit five home runs and drove in 26 runs, putting up a 116 weighted runs created plus in that short span. While it's unlikely that he'll turn back the clock and become the Shogo Akiyama that broke the single season hits record in 2015, he should improve as he readjusts to MPB pitching, as he wasn't fully healthy throughout 2022. However, his 19.5% strikeout rate was uncharacteristically high, his outfield defense is in decline, and he'll be yet another year older at 34. So there are definitely some concerns, but Akiyama has the track record to earn the benefit of the doubt, and he provides another veteran presence on a carp team that has lost a lot of it in recent years. At the number 46 spot, right-handed pitcher Yuya Yanagi. Yanagi was far and away the best pitcher in the Central League in 2021, leading the competition with a 2.20 ERA with 168 strikeouts. His underlying numbers also looked great, and considering that he was only 27 years old, many people, myself included, rated him very highly. Unfortunately, the regression curve hit Yanagi hard in 2022, as his ERA spiked by a run and a half, and his strikeout rate dipped by almost 6%. Even so, there's hope going forward. Yanagi had the worst home run to fly ball ratio among qualified MPB pitchers last year. Meanwhile, his velos and batted ball profile didn't change all that much, so if you attribute his success in 2021 to good luck, and his shortcomings in 2022 to bad luck, then Yanagi should rebound and still be among the league's better pitchers in 2023. Next up at number 45, third baseman Toshiro Miyazaki. I think Miyazaki is simultaneously one of the most overrated and underrated players in Japan. His biggest fans will rate him as one of the best players in the league because his career batting average is over 300. But his biggest detractors will argue that his offense can't possibly offset his terrible defense. And in my opinion, Miyazaki is somewhere in between this range, but closer to the latter. He's an exceptional pure hitter, no doubt about it. His bat-to-ball skills have been remarkably consistent throughout his career, as his strikeout rate has been in the single digits every year since 2016. He was the only qualified hitter not named Masataka Yoshida to draw more walks than strikeouts last season. And he even has some sneaky power, averaging 26 doubles and 15 jacks a year over the past four seasons. With that being said, his defense at the hot corner is really poor. He had negative 10 ultimate zone rating last year. And as he's already in his mid-30s, the fielding will only get worse and his defensive deficiencies will only continue to subtract from his offensive value. Alright, number 44 is outfielder Yuki Okabayashi. It's awfully rare to say that a hitter with zero career home runs is one of the top 50 players in the game, but that's exactly where Okabayashi finds himself. The majority of the 20-year-old's value comes from his superb defense and base running, as both his ultimate zone rating and ultimate base running metrics were absolutely off the charts this past year at plus 27.2 and plus 8.4 respectively. Nobody else was even close. 
and he's no slouch at the plate either as he posted a 112 WRC Plus in his first full season. The only problem with Okabayashi's game is that he has so little power that pitchers can just pound the zone against him without the fear of extra bases. His career walk rate is only 4.4%. The good news is he also has very good contact rates, ranking in the top 10 in the Central League in both strikeout rate and swinging strike rate. Plus his elite speed allows him to beat out balls that most others wouldn't even dream about. Coming in at number 43, utility player Ukyo Shuto. In many regards, Shuto is a similar player to Okabayashi, so they find themselves right next to each other in the rankings. He's one of, if not the fastest player in Japan right now, and he's already stolen 118 bases in just 335 career games. His 2020 campaign was particularly impressive as he managed to swipe 50 bags in just 103 games, putting him on pace for 70 steals in a full season. That's a feat that's yet to be accomplished in the 21st century in MPB. And what really sets Shuto further apart from his competition is the versatility. The defensive wizard has played six different positions over the past two seasons, and he's exceptional at almost all of them, though third and center are where he spent the majority of the time in 2022. And even his hitting is starting to come along. Now, he isn't going to blow the cover off the ball, but he's got some sneaky power, and any ball in the gaps is always a threat to be a triple. He even had 3.1 Delta Graphs war in just 80 games last year. So if he stays healthy, Shuto is more than capable of pulling off a 5 plus war campaign. For number 42, it's right-handed pitcher Masahiro Tanaka. Let's be honest, Tanaka is no longer the guy that went 24-0 back in 2013. At 34 years old, he's well past his prime. But at the end of the day, he's still Masahiro Tanaka, not only one of the best Japanese pitchers of this generation, but of all time, with pinpoint command of the strike zone. His 3.08 xFIP indicates that he underperformed the 3.31 ERA in 9-12 record, but he also had the second worst opponent hard hit percentage in the Pacific League last year, so that is definitely a bit concerning. When Tanaka joined the New York Yankees in 2014, he threw his four main pitches pretty much equally and was big on the split finger two seam combo. Nowadays, he's really heavy on fastballs and sliders, so he's trying to adapt. And Masahiro can still dominate on any given day, but the question is, is this who Tanaka is now? A good but not a great number two type in the rotation? Or does he have what it takes to regain that true ace status? At number 41, left-handed pitcher Shinosuke Ogasawara. I had a really tough time figuring out how to order the next three pitchers on this list, but Ogasawara finds himself just outside the top 40. He was a highly touted prospect all the way back in 2015, but his career got off to a bit of an underwhelming start. He wasn't bad, but he just wasn't living up to the hype. However, that all changed in 2022 as the Southpaw had by far the best season of his career with a 2.76 ERA with 142 punchouts across 146 and two thirds. He had the best K rate in the Central League among qualifiers at 24% and had the second best FIP at 2.82. He also showcased an uptick in velocity while utilizing his main weapons in the changeup and curveball very effectively. So at 25 years old, Ogasawara finally seems to be settling into the league. He's never thrown more than 150 innings in a season though, so hopefully he gets a bigger workload in 2023. Next at number 40, Southpaw Keiji Takahashi. Takahashi has pretty similar numbers to Ogasawara, but I think his pure stuff is much better. He tops out around 95 to 96 miles per hour, and his average velocity has been increasing every year since he broke into the league in 2018. He can be very deceptive with a variety of windups and his knack for generating whiffs is first class. Takahashi's major flaw, however, is his command, or lack thereof. Now, this usually translates to him being effectively wild, but it also makes it difficult for him to work deep into games due to high pitch counts. So if he can lower the walk rate a bit, then the 25-year-old should be ready to take that next step and become a true ace. And the Swallows definitely need him to step up with their young phenom Yasunobu Okugawa under the knife. Coming in at number 39, left-handed pitcher Haruto Takahashi. As I alluded to earlier, I really struggled to rank Ogasawara and the two Takahashis because they all have some incredible upside, but they also all have some clear flaws. And for Haruto, his health is the biggest issue. When he's on the mound, he is absolutely electric. He might even be a top 5 pitcher in MPB, but he was reduced to just 7 starts in 2021, and he missed all of 2022 with Tommy John. 
So this has led Tigers fans to call him the Glass Ace. When we last saw him pitch, Takahashi was practically unhittable, holding the opposition scoreless in five of his seven regular season starts, including two complete game shutouts and two one-hitters. Now, you never know how well a pitcher can rebound after elbow surgery, but Takahashi relied pretty heavily on the split finger, so I think he'll be fine even if the velo drops. We just have to pray that Takahashi is healthy enough to showcase his dazzling game in 2023. For the number 38 position, right-hander Yasunobu Okagawa. Alongside Roki Sasaki, Okagawa was the coveted prospect of the 2019 draft, and he did not disappoint in his rookie season, posting a 3.26 ERA and a minuscule 2.4% walk rate across 18 starts. But Okagawa's 2022 unfortunately came to an early end due to an elbow injury. He initially opted not to get surgery on it though, and that was probably the wrong choice because now he's going to miss even more time. So it's difficult to predict when Okugawa will return to the mound and how effective he will be when that time comes, but if one thing is clear, it's that his true talent is off the charts. Using his pinpoint command as his main weapon, Okugawa will be a superstar in this league for many years to come. At number 37, outfielder Roya Kurihara. Much like Okugawa, Kurihara's 2022 season was cut short after just one week as he tore his ACL. However, his rehab seems to be coming along well, and he will reportedly be moved to third base next season. Kurihara made huge strides in his game in 2021 and looked excellent in just five games in 2022. He's been cutting down on the strikeout rate while increasing the walk rate, and he still maintained the power numbers too, as he put up a 134 WRC plus with 4.0 war and hit 21 dingers two years ago. At 26 years old, Kurihara is poised to take over as one of the faces of the Hawks franchise. Coming in at number 36, outfielder Roma Nishikawa. With Seiya Suzuki gone, Roma Nishikawa was the best position player to suit up for the Hiroshima Carp in 2022. Despite playing just 97 games, Nishikawa led the Carp in batting average, slugging, OPS, WRC+, and defensive runs, while finishing second in on-base percentage and third in hits and home runs. On a rate basis, he was a top 10 hitter in MPB last year. Now, he's much better suited for the corners than in center, and I'd like to see him hit the ball in the air more, but overall, Nishikawa has displayed all the tools of a star. Going into his age 28 season, he has the potential to build on all those numbers and lead the carp through their retooling efforts. At number 35, outfielder Rosuke Tatsumi. The Eagles have been waiting for Tatsumi to arrive since he was drafted in the first round in 2019. He impressed with the glove in his first few seasons, but the bat has taken a bit longer to develop. In 2022, though, he finally put it all together with a 133 WRC plus and elite defense for 3.8 war on Delta Graphs and 5.2 war on MPBStats.com. He posted career highs across the board, and his under-the-hood numbers improved as well. Tatsumi will have a key role to play for Rakuten in 2023 with his superb defense in center field, speed on the base paths, and hopefully sustained improvements at the plate. At number 34, shortstop Sosuke Genda. Since entering the league in 2017, Genda has been the definition of consistency. You know exactly what he's going to give you each year. A batting average around 270, lots of stolen bases, and highlight real defense. Make no mistake, he is by far the best defensive infielder in Japan. Both the metrics and eye test back it up. At the same time, he has little to no power and doesn't draw many walks, so his batting value is fairly limited, and he's been below league average by WRC Plus every single year. Still, his elite speed and defense gives him a very high floor, so he's still a top 2 or 3 shortstop in the league. For the number 33 spot, right-handed pitcher Tomoyuki Sugano. Sugano is a legend. He's basically the Clayton Kershaw of Japan in terms of how dominant of a run preventer he was throughout the 2010s. But much like Kershaw, Sugano is well past his prime. He's been plagued by injuries, and his FIP has been no better than league average in each of the past two seasons. Not to mention his K-rate and VLO dropped considerably last year. But this is still Tomoyuki Sugano we're talking about. A top 20, maybe even a top 15 MPB pitcher all time. And even at his worst, he still controls the strike zone incredibly well and has been able to maintain an ERA in the low threes. So it's possible that Sugano will just continue to regress, but at 33 years old, I think he's equally capable of reinventing himself and reviving his career. Coming in at number 32, second baseman Shogo Nakamura. 
Nakamura had a slow start to the year and his defensive metrics were uncharacteristically bad all season long, but if you look at the overall track record, Nakamura has been one of the most well-rounded players in the league for the past couple of years. Last season, he ran into a lot of bad luck and still managed a solid WRC Plus of 123, and if he had more protection in the Marines lineup, his numbers would probably look a lot better since he's better suited for the top of the order, but circumstances force him to hit in the middle. He's got strong strikeout to walk ratios, makes solid contact, runs the base as well, and plays great defense, at least prior to 2022. So some people may wonder why I rate Nakamura so highly when I didn't even include Rosuke Kikuchi with a pretty similar profile in my top 50. And to put it bluntly, Nakamura is simply a better hitter, and he's much younger, so I think his best days are still in front of him. For number 31, right-handed pitcher Naoyuki Uwasawa. Uwasawa is currently training at Driveline and recently declared his MLB aspirations, so it'll be really interesting to see if his game takes yet another step forward in 2023. Since debuting in 2014 as a 20-year-old, Uwasawa has been one of the most consistently underrated pitchers in Japan with a career ERA of 3.24 and a strikeout rate of 20%. There were a lot of question marks about his future when he broke his knee in 2019, but he's really showcased his resilience and come back even stronger. He has an assortment of great off-speed pitches, and he's very good at keeping the ball in the park. So I think Uwasawa is just going to keep doing his thing and put up an ERA in the low threes or high twos. Getting the top 30 started, first baseman Yusuke Oyama. Oyama has been the Tigers' most consistent power hitter since joining the team in 2017. His best season was 2020 when he had a 150 WRC plus and finished tied for second in home runs in the central with Munetaka Murakami. Last two months of 2022 aside, he seemed to find consistency for the first time in his career last season and if he's given one position to play in the field instead of the 3-4 to four that he had last year, he could really settle in and flourish in his age 28 season. A 30 homer 100 RBI season for the first time in his career is definitely on the cards. So even though his defensive value is pretty limited, there's few guys in the league with the game-changing power that Oyama provides. At number 29, Takashi Ogino, outfielder. Ogino is defying the Asian curve as he only seems to be getting better with age. In fact, the veterans' best four seasons by WRC Plus have all come in the past four years. And in 2022, despite playing in just 89 games, the 36-year-old accumulated 4.1 war. That's an incredible 6.6 .6 war pace over a full season. He also hit over 300, stole 15 bases, and put up 10.2 UZR in left field. I can't rate him much higher on this list because I think the old age has to catch up to him eventually, but there's no doubt that Ogino has been one of the best outfielders in the league for a while now, and many people, myself included, have been underrating him for far too long. For the 28th best player in MPB, third baseman Egoro Mogi. Mogi is very much the X factor for the Eagles. When he plays, and those are the key words, he's a true difference maker, averaging 4.4 war per 143 games over his career. He's smooth as silk at third base, runs well, and has an above average bat. The Eagles have really missed him for long stretches in recent seasons. They've improved the backups behind him with the acquisitions of Toshiki Abe and Michael Franco, but it's hard to see this team making serious noise without a healthy season from their former captain. At number 27, outfielder Keita Sano. Make no mistake, Sano is a terrible fielder. The eye test alone will attest to this, but Sano has hit over 300 for three straight seasons while slugging over 460 each year, perfectly filling the void Yoshi Tsutsugo left in the Yokohama lineup. Plus, he has elite contact rates, as only Sano and Masataka Yoshida managed to slug 490 or higher while maintaining a strikeout rate in the single digits in 2022. He was also third in MPB in hard hit percentage, leading me to believe that he's yet to reach his offensive ceiling. He may not have much value in other aspects of the game, but there's no doubt that the 28-year-old has established himself as one of Japan's finest pure hitters. For number 26, catcher Shogo Sakakura. While 2022 was a step backward for Shogo Sakakura, the 24-year-old catcher-slash-corner infielder still put up a career-best 2.9 war and led the carp in hits with 155, tying him with Munetaka Murakami for 5th in the central. His 16 home runs was also good for 2nd on the team. Now that Sakakura is expected to see more time consistently behind the plate, 
he should be able to focus more on hitting instead of having to learn a new position all year. And with more protection in the lineup, he should be poised for a career year in 2023 in what will be his age 25 season. He's one of the few players on this carb team that are truly capable of carrying the offense and becoming the new face of the franchise. Coming in at the halfway mark at number 25, right-handed pitcher Hiroto Takahashi. There are very few rookies capable of making a first impression quite like Takahashi did. The 19-year-old burst onto the scene and dominated the league with a 2.47 ERA in 19 starts. He finished 4th in the Central League Rookie of the Year vote, but let's be honest, he absolutely deserved to win it. For MPB pitchers with at least 110 innings pitched, Takahashi's K-rate of 29% ranked 2nd, only to Roki Sasaki. The pure stuff is off the charts, especially his fastball that sits in the mid-90s and his wipeout split finger. He looked absolutely unhittable at times last summer. So with a little more experience, Takahashi has the ability to become a perennial contender for the Sawamura Award. At number 24, right-handed pitcher Hiromi Ito. Ito is still on the rise. 2022 was a bit of a strange year for him, but it was still a brilliant campaign for the sophomore. He didn't record many strikeouts, as many expected him to based on the incredible rookie year, but the underlying numbers indicate that he should have had more. And despite that, he didn't even need them. He was excellent at making batters miss the sweet spot on the bat, leading all qualified MPB pitchers in lowest hard hit percentage. The main thing to look for from Ito in 2023 is just how far he's going to take his experimentation, such as the occasional sidearm delivery, or the EFIS, to continue his development. So, if he has sort of a mix of the 2021 season with all the strikeouts and the 2022 season with all the soft contact, he can propel himself to be one of the best pitchers in the league in 2023. For the 23rd spot, Teruaki Sato, 3rd baseman. Sato has mostly played outfield throughout his young career, but he's expected to be utilized as a full-time 3rd baseman next season. He's the only left-handed hitter in MPB history to record 20-plus home runs in each of his first two seasons after being drafted. All of his numbers, other than the home run total, improved in 2022, and he has the potential to be one of the best power hitters in all of baseball if he controls his bat a little bit better and lays off pitches out of the strike zone. His outside zone swing percentage last season, while still less than ideal, did improve immensely from his rookie year. Alex Ramirez says that he has the potential for 40-plus home runs, and while that may not happen quite yet in 2023, I think 30 is more than possible, along with 30-plus doubles and double-digit steals. At number 22, right-handed pitcher Masato Morishita. While he still hasn't reached the heights of his elite Rookie of the Year season in 2020, 2022 was Masato Morishita's first real shot at being the ace of the Hiroshima Carb, taking the reins from a struggling Daichi Osera. The Carb's only qualified starter in 2022, he was largely league average, but Morishita was able to improve his peripheral numbers from his shaky 2021 season, lowering both his walk rate and home run rate. Should the defense behind him improve, his hits per nine should also come down. But the main thing that concerns me about him is just the health. He got elbow surgery over the offseason, and that was probably necessary because his strikeout rate has dropped each year, signifying that he probably had been dealing with some discomfort for a while. So, Marista does have a lot of question marks, but if one thing is clear, the torch has been passed. His raw stuff is off the charts, so I hope we can see him healthy enough to get back to his Rookie of the Year form. Coming in at the 21st position, Yudai Ono, left-handed pitcher. Ono almost threw a perfect game this year, only surrendering a hit with two outs in the 10th inning as he had no run support, a story that's unfortunately been all too common for him throughout his career. Now, Ono definitely benefits from pitching in the pitching-friendly confines of the Nagoya Dome, but there's very few pitchers with a resume quite like him. He's had a sub-3 ERA in each of the past four years, including a sub-2 ERA in 2020, which won him the Sawamura Award. His K-rate did take a dip in 2022, which was to be expected for a 33-year-old, but even so, he had an ERA minus of 81, almost 20% above league average. So he's not really a guy that needs immense swing and miss to succeed, which leads me to believe that he's still got plenty of great years left in him. Getting the top 20 started with Southpaw Shota Imanaga. Despite missing the first month of the season due to injury, Imanaga ended the season with a career-best 2.21 ERA and a quality start percentage at 76%, both third in the Central League and a remarkable 0.94 whip, which was best in the league. 
He pitched a no-hitter in Sapporo in June and was awarded the monthly MVP in August with a 5-0 record and an ERA of 1.25. His most impressive pitch right now is the fastball. Of his 136 total punchouts, almost two-thirds came on the fastball. And that's pretty surprising because he was never much of a velo guy. But he's added about 5 miles per hour on average going back to his rookie year, and he even occasionally touches around 93 miles per hour now. Last year, he did express some interest in playing in MLB, so there is also a slight possibility that he'll be posted next year. At number 19, right-handed pitcher Shosei Togo. Sugano's decline has coincided with Togo's rise, as the 21-year-old had a career year in 2022 with a 2.62 ERA, 3.21 FIP, and a 21.9% K rate across 171 and two-thirds frames, which was second most in the Central League. The one thing that's concerned me with him is that his velo has actually dropped the last few years, but I think that just may be a result of him pacing himself for the entire season. And his slider and forkball are outstanding swing and miss weapons, so it hasn't really affected his ability to rack up strikeouts. Going into his age 22 season, Giants fans are expecting big things from Togo, especially now that he's gotten over the hump of reaching double digit wins, which was apparently a big mental block for him in years prior. For the number 18 spot, Hiroya Miyagi Southpaw. After debuting as a 19 year old in 2020, Miyagi has already established himself as one of Japan's premier arms, and he's my number one ranked lefty going into 2023. In 50 career stars, he has a fantastic ERA of 2.89. He was named the Pacific League Rookie of the Year in 2021, and although his surface level numbers got worse in 2022, the underlying stats told a different story as he ranked top 10 among qualified MPB pitchers in key stats like FIP, XFIP, K minus BB percentage, and soft contact rate. The scariest part is Miyagi is only 21 years old, so I fully expect him to keep developing to form a devastating one two punch alongside Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Number 17 is outfielder Hiroaki Shimauchi. It's kind of cliche to say, but Shimauchi gives you a quality, professional at bat every time up. From 2012 to 2020, Shimauchi was a solidly above average hitter, but he wasn't anywhere near the elite category. These past two seasons, however, the 32-year-old has transformed into a whole new animal, putting up a 155 WRC Plus in back-to-back -back years. He's almost walking as much as he strikes out, and despite only hitting 14 home runs in 2022, he made up for it with a league-best 36 doubles. Now, defensively, his best days are probably behind him, but the bat has truly come alive these past couple of years, and I love his process at the plate. Coming in as the 16th best player, outfielder Yoshihiro Maru. It wasn't all that long ago that Maru was in contention for the number one player in MPB. I mean, he won back-to-back -back MVP awards with Hiroshima in 2017 and 18. Since joining the Yomiuri Giants in 2019, his numbers have definitely dropped off a bit, but when you're falling from the highest of peaks, your level of production is still going to be awfully good, and with the exception of an uncharacteristic slump in the first half of 2021, Maru has remained one of the most consistent power bats in the country, crushing 20 plus bombs in seven consecutive seasons. In 2022, he even miraculously cut his strikeout rate in half, erasing all doubts I had about him in 2021. He won't be playing much center field for the Giants going forward, but he should settle nicely into right field and continue to rake for many more seasons. Coming in at number 15, right-hander Koyo Aoyagi. I think Aoyagi must have sacrificed his hairline for pitching talents because he's indisputably a top 5 pitcher in MPV right now. He has a career 2.82 ERA dating back to 2016, and he only seems to be getting better by the year as his last two seasons have been particularly impressive. He doesn't beat you with the pure stuff or the velocity. Instead, he beats you with deception, pinpoint accuracy, and ability to keep the ball on the ground. Derived from his sidearm delivery and elite two-seamer plus slider. Now, his peripherals are always quite a bit worse than his actual numbers, but I think Aoyagi is the type of pitcher that's capable of consistently overperforming his expected numbers. At number 14, first baseman Hotaka Yamakawa. After crushing 90 home runs between 2018 and 19, Yamakawa dealt with some injuries and took a huge step back in 2020 and 21 as his home run totals were cut in half. But in 2022, the 30-year-old got his career back on track as he crushed 41 bombs with a 313 isolated power, both second best in MPB. 
He proved that he can truly carry an entire offense, putting the weak Lions lineup on his back to propel them into the playoffs. His WRC Plus of 186 was a career high in a full season of games, and although he wasn't nearly as explosive in the second half as he was in the first half, the underlying numbers absolutely support his case as one of the two or three best sluggers in the country. He was top six or better in hard hit percentage, fly ball percentage, and walk percentage, pretty much all the things you want to see out of a power hitter. For the number 13 spot, outfielder Yasutaka Shiomi. Shiomi didn't break out until he was 26, so he's a bit of a late bloomer, but he's made up for the late start and then some over the past two and a half seasons. Since 2020, he's been incredibly consistent, maintaining a WRC Plus between 119 and 129 each year while playing excellent defense in center. Last season, he ranked third among all MPB hitters with 5.9 war, hitting 16 bombs, stealing 24 bags, and winning a Golden Glove award. He even cut down on his K rate significantly from 29.2% down to 21.5%. So, Shiomi is certainly an unconventional leadoff man by MPB standards, but I see him as kind of a Japanese version of George Springer, and he should have another great year in 2023. He's more than capable of a 2020 season. At number 12, shortstop Hayato Sakamoto. It's not a controversial take anymore to say that Sakamoto is the greatest Japanese shortstop of all time. Since debuting all the way back in 2007, the face of the Giants franchise has accumulated 2,205 hits, ranking 19th all time. And at 34 years old, he's likely to finish in the top 10 or maybe even the top 5 by the end of his career. Unfortunately, injuries have limited his playing time the last two seasons, and he's no longer the Iron Man he was in his youth. Additionally, some off-the-field scandals have hurt his reputation. In just 89 games last year, though, the veteran captain put up a 115 WRC Plus with 2.9 war while displaying excellent glove work. Now, he's never going to hit 40 home runs again like he did in his 2019 MVP campaign, but Sakamoto is still clearly the best shortstop in Japan on both sides of the ball. Just outside the top 10, second baseman Tetsuto Yamada comes in at 11. Much like Sakamoto, Yamada is one of the most decorated players of this generation, and he's arguably the best Japanese second baseman of all time. At his peak, this guy was hitting over 300 with 30 plus homers and 30 plus steals almost every year. Now he's lost some athleticism over the years and he isn't causing as much chaos on the base pass anymore, but his game has continued to evolve and he's somehow only 30 years old. In 2022, he had a career low in batting average, but he still had 31 doubles and 23 homers and he hit 34 jacks just two years ago, so the power is still legit. He was lifting the ball more than ever, so if a couple more of those deep flies had gone out of the park, the numbers would have been even better. And it's really a shame that Yamada has never won a gold glove since Kikuchi's won it for 10 straight years, because his defense is truly outstanding. So all in all, I have very few concerns for Yamada and expect him to rebound in 2023. Alright, it's finally time for my top 10 MPB players of 2023. And at number 10, it's third baseman Kazuma Okamoto. Okamoto has been the most consistent slugger in Japan for the past half decade, as 2022 was his fifth consecutive season with 30 plus home runs, and he's only 26 years old. Now, he had the worst slash line of his career and even lost the cleanup spot for Yomiuri for a while, but he also had the worst batting average and balls in play of his career, so a lot of that can simply be attributed to bad luck. And hey, if you can still hit 30 bombs in a quote-unquote down year, especially with the dead balls, you've got some crazy pop. As for his defense, it's tough to say. I don't think he looks very good in terms of the eye test, and he had a negative 1.7 UZR last year, but he was a plus 14 just three years ago, so he has the ability to be both an elite hitter and elite fielder. But regardless of how he performs with the glove, I think it's safe to say that Okamoto will have yet another 30 plus home run, maybe even 40 plus home run campaign in 2023. Up next at number 9, Koji Chikamoto, outfielder. If it weren't for Munitaka Murakami, Chikamoto would have won the Central League Rookie of the Year in 2019. And in the three years since then, he's gradually moved up the ranks and established himself as one of the best outfielders in the country. This is a guy who's going to give you A-plus center field defense and base running with lightning speed, averaging 30 steals a year. And he has something to offer at the plate too, with a career 292 average and 340 on base. 
He doesn't have much power, but in 2022, he was able to increase his walk rate while striking out only 10.9% of the time. His home run total dipped from 10 in 2021 to just 3, and his slug dropped from a solid 441 to an underwhelming 352, which was a bit concerning, but he was hitting for more extra bases in the second half, so if that carries over into 2023, then the 28-year-old should be poised for a career year. At number 8, second baseman Shugo Maki. For the first two months of 2022, Maki had an OPS well over 1,000 and was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Murakami for the home run title. A summer slump brought his numbers back down to earth, but all Maki has done in his first two years in the league is rake with an 875 OPS in 272 career games. The most promising part of Maki's sophomore season though was his improvements in discipline, upping his walk rate by 2.5% and lowering his key rate by 2% without sacrificing any of that immense raw power. That may not seem like much, but his free-swinging batting approach in his rookie year wasn't really sustainable, so these are fantastic trends to see. Anyone who can slug over 500 while striking out only 15% of the time this early in their career is a special kind of talent. And if Maki can just improve his poor defense at the Keystone in 2023, then the sky's the limit for the 24-year-old. I can see him hitting 40 doubles and 30 homers easily. Coming in at number 7, outfielder Kensuke Kondo. After a decade in Hokkaido, Kondo signed a 7-year mega deal this offseason to join the SoftBank Hawks. And with a much better lineup surrounding him, there's a good chance that Kondo will be in the MVP conversation in 2023. Kondo's eye and ability to put the ball in play has always been unparalleled. He's an absolute on-base machine with a career walk rate of 15.3%, and an outstanding 1.07 BBK ratio. His WRC Plus has been 169 or better in each of the last three years, and with Masadaka Yoshida leaving MPB to join the Boston Red Sox, I can now proclaim Kondo as the best pure hitter in Japan. He doesn't offer much defensively, but Kondo is a true game changer if he can just stay healthy. At number 6, second baseman Hideto Asamura. From 2018 to 2020, Asamura crushed over 30 home runs each year, emerging as one of Japan's premier sluggers. He hasn't reached the 30 mark the past two seasons, but he's still been an elite hitter as his weighted runs created plus hasn't dipped below 140 since 2017. The 32-year-old has excellent plate discipline, drawing over 90 walks in four straight seasons. And this is from a guy that used to be a free-swinging contact hitter early in his career, so he's really made great strides to evolve in his approach. Even as his defense continues to regress, I'm not going to bet against Asamura's power upside, especially when his disciplined process at the plate affords him a very high floor. We've finally reached the top 5. And at the number 5 spot, I've got catcher Tomiya Mori. The 27-year-old backstop is switching teams from Cebu to Oryx this season, and he has big shoes to fill as the Buffaloes will need him to make up for the loss of Masataka Yoshida offensively. In 2022, his season got off to a nightmare start when he fractured his finger in April, throwing his catcher mask in frustration, but once he returned in June, the 2019 Pacific League MVP got his year back on track and slashed 251, 328, 391 with 21 doubles and 8 home runs across 102 games. It was a bit of a down year by his standards, but he still led all MPB catchers in war and WRC Plus at 3.7 and 120 respectively. The backstop had a particularly impressive July, hitting 325, 435, 481 in 20 games. Mori has posted a 400 plus OBP in two of the last four seasons, and his batted ball profile was pretty consistent with his career marks, so I expect him to rebound again in 2023 with his new team. For the number four spot, right handed pitcher Roki Sasaki. Out of every pitcher I've talked about in this video, Roki is the only one doing things we've never seen before, literally. As a 20-year-old sophomore, Sasaki threw the first perfect game in MPB in 28 years, setting a world record with 13 consecutive strikeouts in the process, finishing the game with 19. Then he went out the following week and almost threw another perfect game, punching out 13 through 8 frames before being pulled due to pitch count. Those two games alone tell you everything you need to know about the kid nicknamed the Monster of the Reiwa Era. And even though he did struggle with his command at times in the second half, he still finished the year with a 2.02 ERA, 1.72 FIP, 
and a 35.3% strikeout rate with 6.1 war in just 20 starts. Again, it goes without saying, but Sasaki's ceiling is unrestricted. He may truly become the best pitcher in the world down the line, and that's not even an exaggeration. But as it stands, he still needs to build his body and stamina up to be able to make it through an entire season healthy with 25 starts or so. Let's hope 2023 is that year. Up next at number 3, outfielder Yuki Yanagita. Yanagita had the worst year of his career in 2022. He still had a 151 WRC+. What does that tell you? Well, Yanagita is the greatest player of this generation, often called the Mike Trout of Japan and he's easily a top 10 MPB player all time in my opinion. But I don't want to just gloss over his shortcomings last season. He had his worst walk rate ever in a qualified season, his worst hard hit percentage since Delta Graphs started tracking the stat in 2014, his worst strikeout rate since 2017, and he was an awful base runner and fielder, areas where he previously shined. That reduced his Delta Graphs war to a pedestrian 1.8 on the year, though MPB stats was a lot kinder and gave him 4.0 war. But either way, he was way below his career averages. And yet, I'm not really concerned about Gita. He was still a beast in the postseason and continued to come up clutch time after time in high leverage situations. And I'm not just making that up, he ranked first in MPB in Delta Graphs' clutch metric. So it's totally plausible that the injuries have finally caught up to Yanagita and he just ends up getting worse from here on out, but it's equally plausible that this was just a slight blip in the radar and he goes right back to his past MVP form. So I cannot take him out of my top 3 quite yet. At number 2, just barely missing out on the top spot, right-handed pitcher Yoshinobu Yamamoto. It's awfully harsh to lose the number one spot even after winning back-to-back -back triple crowns, MVPs, and Sawamura awards, but that's exactly the case for Yamamoto. The ace of Samurai Japan continued his utter dominance on the mound in 2022, winning 15 games with a 1.68 ERA while striking out 205 batters across 193 innings. On the surface, those numbers aren't quite on the level of his stellar 2021 season, but removing his May 3rd clunker against the SoftBank Hawks lowers his ERA down to 1.44. Additionally, the 24-year-old threw the first no-hitter of his career on June 18th against the Lions and went undefeated in the second half of the season. Yoshinobu also led all qualified MPB pitchers in strikeout rate minus walk rate at 21.8%, FIP at 2.05, and war at 7.9 among other key statistics. Yamamoto is the best pitcher in Japan since Yu Darvish and Masahiro Tanaka at their absolute peaks and he may even be better than that. There's a good chance this is his final year in MPB before being posted to MLB so I don't expect him to slow down at all in 2023. And that finally takes us to the number one MPB player going into 2023 you already know who it is, the god himself, Munetaka Murakami, third baseman. Murakami firmly etched his name in the MPB history books by becoming the first Japanese player since Hideki Matsui in 2002 to have a 50-plus home run season. Then, he took it a step further by setting the all-time single season record for a Japanese-born player with 56 home runs. He also set a world record by homering in five consecutive plate appearances between July 31st in August 2nd. Over a three-month stretch from June to August, Murakami was practically unstoppable. No, he was literally unstoppable, hitting 393 with 34 bombs and 69 RBIs. His historic season netted him 10.3 Delta Graphs war and a WRC plus of 223. After blasting number 55 to tie the legend Sadaharu O, oh, however, Murakami fell into a massive slump and limped across the finish line. But this display of mortality should not put a shadow over his monstrous season. Murakami won both the slash line triple crown with a 318 batting average, 458 on base percentage and 710 slugging, and the traditional triple crown with a 318 average, 56 home runs and 134 ribbies, becoming the youngest player in MPB ever to do so. But perhaps overlooked is his base running as he became the first player since Makoto Kozuru in 1950 to steal 10 plus bases while also hitting 50 plus home runs in a season. Simply put, Murakami had arguably the greatest MPB season of all time and I can't wait to see him take the field again in 2023. 
All right, so there you have it, my top 50 MPV players in 2023. I'm sure you don't agree with all of it, so feel free to comment down below and start a conversation, but we'll have to wait and see if I'm proven right or wrong based on what happens in the 2023 season. This script is now approaching 9,000 words, so I won't say anything else here other than to thank the following people for helping me on this video. Joseph A for the graphics and some of the fighters players, Gaijin Baseball for some of the kart players, Baseball Underrated for some of the Eagles players, Hanshin Tigers English News for some of the Tigers players, Oryx Buffaloes English News for some of the Buffaloes players, and Bay Stars English for some of the Bay Stars players. I'll put all their Twitter links in the description below. Please give them a follow. I couldn't do this video without them. And I'm really sorry if I missed someone here. I recently got suspended on Twitter and lost my DMs, but please follow me over on my new account at Yaku Cosmo. And as always, special thanks to my patrons, Chris J, Jonathan Greenberg, Hinosato Yaku, Poker Pack Rat, Corgi Racing, Anthony Pang, Jake Royce, Marcus Hill, Ua Bird, Ryan Fox, Jeff W, Char Aznable, Juan Jose Sanchez Bracamontes, Christopher Woods, Samantha Garave, Yuki Summerine, Kud, Jem Morelos, Gabriel Foss, Kurt Berglund, Eduardo Granados, Kotaro Imahayashi Kim, J1, Tom Musa, Mike Braun, Lucas Bora, Stu22, Alex Irish, Marty Mercari, PB Cow98, Tokyo Kyojin Fan, Dave Hackerson, Brainlit Wojak, Riku, Joe Hironaka, and Joey Mellows. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more MPB content in English.